In this presentation, I'll be discussing the differences between one-on-one -on -one communication and group communication. You might have been told that one is better than the other or that one-on-one -on -one communication is basically a waste of time because you could just tell all of your team members the same information as a group. There are many reasons why both one-on-one -on -one and group communication are important and necessary. Let's get started. The importance of personal connection. For introverts in particular, the difference between one-on-one -on -one communication and group communication is pretty significant. As a leader, it's important to keep in mind that most introverted people would rather have one-on-one -on -one or small group conversations with you than participate in big meetings where lots of people are involved. In general, introverted people are able to form meaningful connections with others more effectively during one-on-one -on -one conversations. Beyond a group of four, you sense a shift in dynamics. It becomes a group discussion rather than an intimate conversation, and the potential for personal connection essentially dissipates. Competition in groups. In larger groups, the atmosphere might feel a bit more competitive in nature. Everyone might be vying for the attention of the leader, meaning you'll basically fall into the role of mediator. That said, Group conversations are a great way to bounce ideas around a room and observe how these ideas sit with different people in the group. For this reason, group communication scenarios tend to be great for brainstorming sessions. Of course, some people may not feel inclined to share their ideas with a big group of people, in which case one-on-one -on -one conversations with these individuals will be necessary as well. Facilitating is necessary. When it comes to group communication, a lot more facilitation of the conversation in general is needed. People are likely to speak over each other and not really listen to one another. This is because they'll be forming the responses in their head rather than actively listening to what the current speaker is saying. When leading group meetings that go awry, it's a smart idea to meet one-on-one -on -one with individuals who didn't get a chance to speak during the meeting. That way, you're ensuring that everyone's voice is being heard which is what makes a great leader. Upholding personas. The other great thing about one-on-one -on -one conversations is that you won't have to worry about people trying to uphold their personas, so to speak. During group meetings, everyone is trying to act a certain way. Again, while some people might fight to try and impress you, others won't want to step on anyone else's toes. If you're really trying to have a meaningful conversation with someone, a one-on-one -on -one meeting will honestly be your best bet. Small group meetings can work well too, so make sure to keep that in mind. One-on-one -on -one versus group support. Ultimately, people are more likely to let their guard down during one-on-one -on -one conversations. They're more likely to share how they're really feeling since there won't be other people around to potentially judge them. There is a certain level of support that can come with group conversations though. When one person shares a great idea with the group, the group will likely hype them up, which might make the person sharing feel more confident about disclosing their ideas during future meetings. As you can see, both one-on-one -on -one communication and group communication methods are necessary, especially in a work environment. Both have their benefits and both have their downsides, so it's really best to try to incorporate a healthy balance of both when it comes to leading your team members. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.